Hello again, everyone. So I'm not sure if this is in the same video or the next video or if you saw it in the last video. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to lay it out, really. Of course, we're putting the wrist suspension arms on hold due to a couple of little issues. And I thought I'd get on something else. Something quite exciting, something I've been waiting ages to do on any car I've owned, and that's big brakes. So let's get them up on the bench, have a look at them, see what I've got. The reason for doing big brakes was, well, I want to get the wheels on. Let's face it, of course, I want to do the brakes first, but they go behind the wheels. So these are the wheels themselves. Uh, very excited to get these on, see how they look. And behind them, I have a set of big brakes to put on. So let's get those out and have a look at those. Right, so in this gigantic box are the front brakes. Let's have a look. So in these boxes here, a set of six pot front brakes from a company called PB Brakes. We've also got a set of uh, four pots for the rears. We'll have a look at those in a bit as well. But let's get these opened up and have a look at them. So here we are. As I say, they're six pot. They've got kind of street, occasional track use pads in them. Uh, they come with all the brackets and a few shims to get them all nice and centered up. They've got some big 330 mil uh, brake discs, rotors, whatever you want to call them in here. Yeah, they should look absolutely fantastic behind those uh, work wheels. Let's have a look at the brake rotors. So here they are. Big 330 mil drilled and slotted two piece rotors. So you've got the rotor itself and you've got the uh, bell, I believe it's called. Kind of the centerpiece, of course, if in the occasion that you'd have to replace these, you could just buy the rotor itself. So I would love to have gone for bigger than 330 mil <laughs> or six pot for that matter. Whereas most 18 inch wheels on the uh, GTA 6 can fit larger brake discs and uh, larger brake calipers. Being that my wheels are three piece, the actual center of them is smaller, more akin to a 17 inch, and therefore you'd run into clearance issues if you were to run any bigger. So 330 mil. Plenty. Personally, I don't plan to track my car all that often, and so it's just going to be an occasional fast street car. You know, maybe once a year I might let it see track, but I've done that before, had a track car. It's not what I'm building this car for, so. Right, so here we are. So I'm not sure how, uh, how well you can see any of this. Uh, got the wheel off, had a big one inch spacer on there, got rid of that. I'll probably go into more detail on the wheels themselves, my my new wheels, in the next video when I put them on. Kind of just going into the specs, the size, the width and the offset of them, just to uh, you know tell you guys a bit about them. Uh, and of course, hopefully the idea is not to run any spacers when I put those wheels on, because I've hopefully got them perfect. Uh, caliper and brake disc, my pads are already a little bit low. My disc is already getting a bit of a lip on it, so I think it was time for a bit of a change anyway. Why not go for an upgrade? Right, so hopefully you guys can see all of this. Uh, I know it might be a little bit dark, the angle might not be particularly good, uh, but it doesn't really matter really. I'm going to be talking over all of it. Uh, so, I mean, first thing I'll have to do, probably the messiest thing, is get the brake line off, just because that is the most stressful thing during this process, I would say. And the only reason for that really is because the uh, flare nut on the end of the hard brake line, I don't know what they're made out of, but they love to round off. So I've had them soaking in uh, penetrant fluid for the last couple of days. I've also picked up one of these flare spanners. Um, which as you can see has a cutout to go over line, sits on that, six points of contact, should hopefully get the job done. So the brake line's up the back here, all covered in this horrible gunk.
Right, so here we are. So, missed a couple of steps, as you can see. Sorry about that. I forgot to uh, forgot to film some of it. So basically, we got the um, got the caliper off, got the old caliper off, uh, we got the old disc off. There was a bit of a trick to that, which I uh, wanted to show you guys, because of course the discs are often just kind of corroded onto the hubs. So there's a couple of holes often on discs that you can uh, thread a couple of little bolts into, or in fact they are actually. I believe the same bolts that hold the caliper together. So if you ever change your pads and your discs, you can use that bolt, pop it in the holes, thread those in, and the disc comes right off. So as you see, I've got the caliper loosely on there at the moment. We had to get the, um, we had to thread lock the two M12 bolts that hold it onto the adapter bracket. Now I need to check that the disc is in the center of the two pads. And if it's not, but there's a couple of shims that are provided in the kit to just center up the caliper on the disc. That's what I'm gonna do now. So let's just get this somewhat tight. Just to make sure when I'm centering up the uh, cap on the disc that the uh, disc is flat on the hub. Just got a couple of spaces mm -hmm. here and tighten some nuts, some wear nuts on. And it stops it from wobbling about as you can see. Cool, they're all hand tight and it's not wobbling. Right, so I've just turned the um just turned the steering so that we can have a look at the So it's a good thing I'm checking uh, rather than just bolting it straight on. You can actually hear the disc. It's coming into contact with this pad. So we've got a couple of shims here. Easily get a couple of shims in there. Barely get one in there. Try for three. Can't get three in the top. So what I think I'm going to do, I put a shim to move it forward, and there should be a shim space between that side and that side, at least. So it. Let's get the brake line on, and we're all done. So the new line comes with these uh, nice new boundary bolts and copper washers. There we go. Finally, got to secure the brake line in place. And there we go. Right, so all I need to do is get this all talked up, move on to the rear. Right, so as you can see, I've got the rear brake disc off. However, I ran into the issue again. So these are the handbrake shoes, um, and this is what actually grips the inside of the uh, rear brake disc when you pull the handbrake, or e-brake if you're in the States. And unfortunately, they're retained, if I bring you around this side, they're retained by these uh, funny looking blue tinted clips here. And those are held in place with these pins. Now, unfortunately, the pins are meant to have like a spade end to them. As you can see, this one is broken. Unfortunately, it's happened on both sides of the car. So luckily, I've ordered two of these and we can get that pin back in. It's a case of pushing it through, twisting it so that it uh, sits vertically in that slot. And when that's done, we can finish off the uh, rear brake and still get it all bled. But unfortunately for now, I'm gonna have to put this on hold just until those parts arrive. It's all a bit difficult getting uh, bits at the moment, of course. So I'm a little bit of an impasse now. With the rear handbrake having its little issues with that pin, uh, of course I can't put the brake disc on. And so because I can't put the brake disc on, can't put the caliper on, can't bleed all the brakes. So I've ordered those parts. It's gonna take a little while to come from, uh, I think coming from Germany. Probably gonna end it here for today. So I may even split this into two episodes. Part one being the front brakes, which you've just seen. And part two is the rear brakes, bleeding all the brakes, uh, maybe fitting some new wheel studs and getting those handbrakes all fixed. Once all the brakes are done all round, we can get the new wheels on. I'll talk about those, show you those. Uh, really looking forward to uh, doing that. So as I always say, if you uh, enjoyed this episode, and I hope you did, uh, do all that good YouTube stuff. Leave a comment down below. Give it a like, whatever. Yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys on the next one. Hope you guys have a good one. Bye for now.